Ooh, all right. <laughs> it's getting immediately very interesting. Let's take a look at Centronic. So this app is probably old news for a lot of people since it has been around for quite a while. But it's on sale right now and I thought maybe it's a good idea to take a closer look at it. This is actually not a complete synthesizer, so they're not completely modeling the gear that they're trying to reproduce, but what they did is they created patches on the original gear, like in this case, for example, the Monopoly, and then they sampled those patches into Centronic. From there it goes through this engine that you can see on the screen. You could call like a hybrid synthesizer engine. So it's kind of a rompler because it has patches uh, sampled that it loads and it's also really big. So in total about five gigabytes. But then it uses those patches and sends it through filters, envelopes, etc. So in the end you still have quite a few options what you could do with the sound. They also added a few basic sine waves for example, or in this case I think it's a pulse wave. Yes, so this is a sample of a pulse with modulation of the square wave, ready for your custom sound design. All right, this sounds pretty basic. So let's see what we can do with that. First maybe let's make it a little, little deeper. All right, that sounds already pretty good. And then uh, let's check out the filters. So what they did is they took the filters of the original gear, modeled it and put it into the chain so that you can have any of the filters on any of the patches. For example, the R type that would be the right one for the Monopoly, but uh, you can switch it to the M type, which would be a Moog filter. And as you can hear, it's immediately pretty different to before. So the filters do make a large difference, but what I personally found is that the difference between the Moog filter and all the others is actually the largest. The other ones aren't so different, but you can hear it if you listen closely. So let's go through those. Let's check the phaser. Ooh, all right. <laughs> it's getting immediately very interesting. So this has a little bit of much feedback problem. Let's dial this back a little bit. All right. Okay, a little more. Not too much. Maybe let's reduce the attack of the filled envelope a little bit. All right, I'm hearing like this little laser type plug there. Okay, so now we could also modulate this. For example, let's give the filter a little bit of modulation. Uh -huh. Aha. <laughs> All right, uh, that's a little bit too much. Wobble, wobble, wobble. Okay, let's play around with the rate a little bit. Okay, so as you can see, I could do quite a lot here. I think I like that. And maybe a little bit of a pan modulation, so it goes from left to right. Alright. It's starting to get very, very weird. I don't know if weird was the intention here, but it is the result. Okay, so maybe a little less attack here. Alright, I like that. Let's make it even more weird. So, because what you can do is you actually have four layers here. So I'm working on layer one now, which is called layer A here, but you have layer B, C, and D. What if I'm going to go to layer B and then I'm using the same basic saw wave here, right? Okay, I now have two layers, the same saw wave, but they're detuned to each other, right? Then let's tune this down. All right, so so now I'm getting a dark growl in the background, right? Okay, let's modulate the growl in the background also. You have a bunch of options of stuff that you could do. I could go further, right? I could add a uh, layer C, layer D. But what we also should take a look at is the 
effects section. Because Centronic also gives you the option to put an effect on everything. So in this case, I just have a channel strip there and the digital reweb, but I could add more. There are about, I think 30 or so. Let's put a little bit of distortion there, right? Ooh. And um, that's the thing. So you could actually create a very interesting complex patch by using four channels, having different effects on each channel, because as you can see, the effects on A are different than the effects on B, right? So I could have totally different effects on A, B, C and D and with this create a very distinct sound. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just using a basic saw wave from the same synth. What you could also do is take one of a completely different patch, right? I could add something that is from a completely different synthesizer here and add those two together. I hope that I showed that you can do actually quite a lot with the sounds in Syntronic. Okay, that's it for today. Bye bye. <laughs>